He says, no, 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 as long as it's not rubbing on that, you're fine. It's my dad. Dad. I think he's doing. He put together the gun, so. Huh? He put together that gun. Oh. Cool. I'm glad it works good. No. It's November 11th, uh, Veterans Day, Saturday at the West End Gun Club. We're on the main line, uh, what I wanted to do before we started the day was to check the uh, cold clean bore or the cold dirty bore velocity out of this gun. Uh, because in the last range vlog I had indicated that the gun was shooting about 80 feet per second slower with a relatively or oh, very clean cold bore. So this is a foul, slightly foul bore. I ran two, um, two runs of the... Uh, foamy bore cleaner and it's so it's still got a little bit of fouling but it's still shooting um, the first shot of the morning was 3,003 ,003 feet per second so I'm going to anticipate the second shot will be about 3080 so 3,080 feet per second um, not sure what to do maybe I just don't clean it at all between range sessions if I only run less than 100 rounds and we'll see if that keeps the speeds up on the next range sessions cold bore shot So the second shot was 3077, so it's a good 74 feet per second faster uh, the, on the subsequent shot. I'm pretty sure it's mostly going to be the amount of fouling in the gun, so I probably need at least one round's worth of fouling in the barrel uh, between cleaning or between range sessions to mitigate that velocity difference. Pick it up. You need to pick up a round. There you go. Is 
this doing? They got this yeah, this, this is the six first five right here, right? First was, rounds. First, first two rounds I did that, and then I was moving it to here. <laughs> you can just you can just move the scope. You just dial the scope over. <laughs> you know, Probably just needs to be adjusted. This is your. This is four rounds here that you shot. Then you came up. This is five. That's good. So here's four. I'm, I don't know. You, I guess I don't know what this was. This looks like a six mil. I only put five in a gun, so I don't know where this came from. I don't know where that came. One, two, three, four. And this is your fifth. This is six right here, right? Oh, I did double shot someone. Yeah, this come bigger. Yeah, this is the this is the factory Hornady ammo. So this is uh, 41 grains, 43.50. That's sh first shot, I think it's first shot, second shot, third shot, fourth shot, and this is fifth, I threw the fifth. Mm. Savage 6.5 Creedmoor. This is with the Starline Brass. These are handles of Starline Brass, and this is factory Hornady ELD 108s. These were reseated deeper by about 33 thousandths to fit in this rifle. The free board's 109. So a really cool thing about this 22 junior rimfire range that we have here at the club is hardly anyone uses it. I rarely see anyone here on um, at the 22 bays when they're not doing their little uh, 22 matches. So it's really nice to be able to come out here and just shoot in a nice quiet session. Even though sometimes I've been out to the main line and it's been pretty quiet. Um, it's even more quieter here and you can just do what you want to do and walk out easily and set up targets, readjust targets. It's nice, a nice place to just to shoot room fire. So that's why my dad and I are out here because we just shot some little bit of center fire. I really didn't need to shoot center fire this morning. I just wanted to do my cold board uh, verification. Um, and then I wanted to come out here and shoot the CZ 455. So, so that's why we're out here mainly is just to shoot the CZ. And I brought my uh, Ruger Mark II, which I haven't shot in years. So we're going to Shoot some of that while we're out here on the junior rimfire range. It's good. Good? Bye bye. You can find adjust it there, but so how's the look on the So line this line up the bore and then we'll line up the, then we'll adjust the scope. Come up? Yeah. These are these are one eighth MOA, so No. You're going up. Yeah. And yeah. You're going down. You want me to go down? Mm -hmm. More. More. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Now go to the right. So you want? No. no. Okay, so I was going this way. More. I could leave it there for me. Right. Just go and shoot it then. Shoot at that bottom one or the. Yeah, that's the bottom one I yeah. shoot. Okay. We need to go out about an inch. An inch, you think? Yeah. Alright. Okay, just try that one. Still low? Not bad. <clears throat> this is the CZ 455 Tactical that I picked up from Rifle Gear in Fountain Valley. It's basically a stock CZ 455, 16 inch barrel. It's got that threaded muzzle. I guess this has got a Boyd stock. It, does, it free floats, I guess. Um, you can run paper 
across the barrel channel and it doesn't really hang up. It's not ideal. They should have channeled out a little better. As far as the scope mount is concerned, this is a Murphy's Precision. I found out about these guys on Rimfire Central, which I'm a member of, or I've been on the forum for years, but I don't really frequent much. The thing with this 455 Picatinny rail is you got an 11 millimeter dovetail on the receiver. And so when you put it on, you're actually using set screws through the rail or through the Picatinny rail and it presses against the actual receiver of the action and it lifts it up and applies pressure that clamps it in. And what sucks about it is that 11 inch, 11 millimeter dovetail isn't exactly perfect when you do this. So you could actually, when you, when you left the set screw, cause it's got two rows of set screws. If you put tighten this set screw too early or too much, you'll can't the mount. And so you kind of have to use a little bit of, a little bit of technique to tighten all those down. Area 419, who makes the Hellfire break, they're actually coming out with a mount for this. It actually clamps correctly, like a real rail. And I actually ordered that one, but in the meantime, I'm using the Murphy's Precision. They're actually based out of Fallbrook, which is right next to Camp Pendleton. Surprisingly enough, I didn't know that. And then I have some of my old TPS one inch rings, or TF TPS, TRS, I don't know. These old one inch rings that I have, and then my trusty Weaver T36, it's a 36 power a scope and it works really well. Uh, as far as the ammo is concerned, I have the uh, Standard Plus by SK and then the Wolf Match Target, which is basically the same exact ammo, just different brand. Um, you can argue whether or not they're exactly the same, but they're off the same factory, um, factory line uh, and they're the same grade uh, ammo as uh, one another. And it seems to be shooting pretty well. That sucker's thin. Yeah. Ah. Is that it? Yeah. Uh. So just a quick analysis of the targets uh, from the CZ455. It's not too bad. I mean, we've got a bunch. The 25 yards is really, really nice. It's really easy to shoot that at 25. With the SK ammo, it holds up really well. Once we stretch it out to 50, though, it gets kind of wild. Uh, you can kind of see this group right here. Um, my father shot this one. It, it tends to shoot high or right at this point area, and then we start drifting low and right. I did the same thing here, um, right here. I shot well within this range right here, and it dropped down a little low and right and my dad shot this one 50 yards starts here then slowly just right so it could be us or it could be the gun maybe we just need to torque down the action screws a little bit better make them more consistent because i didn't do anything to the action screws from the factory out of the box again it could just be us the trigger is a little bit heavy i mean it breaks really nice it's really crisp no no creep over travels okay but it's a little heavier than i would want so maybe i'll have to do a trigger job but 25 yards is really nice shoots really really tight groups with the SK ammo. Didn't bother to shoot the wolf match target or match target ammo, but I'm sure it'll probably shoot the same. So the time is nine, almost nine o'clock. We're pretty much done at the range here. Uh, my dad and I got all the rounds we wanted to on the 22s, but the CC 455 shooting pretty well. Uh, it's nice gun out of the box. I only spent, uh, I think it was 429 or whatnot. I can't remember. After taxes, just a little over 500 with dross fees and all that crap. But I'm going to probably order uh, one of those Yo Dave trigger kits that people talk about. Uh, and I might, I'm eventually I'm going to put a new stock on it. I was going to get an M MPA chassis for it so I can have a 22 bolt rifle that is set up almost just like my, uh, my mousing field with the MPA BA competition chassis. But anyway, uh, we're going to get out of here, probably run some errands or whatever, and then get my dad another free lunch because uh, Veterans Day, obviously today's Veterans Day, but yesterday some of the places were having uh, free deals for veterans or uh, promotions for veterans, but I figure we'll take advantage of that uh, for my father, get him another another lunch or whatever. Anyway, today's Saturday, November 11th at the West End Gun Club. Uh, it's a pretty relaxed vlog, but hopefully um, you got some info out of it. But other than that, uh, this is the end of the vlog. I'll see you at the next range session. Okay.